We'll start out with some introductions um, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to put my, my uh, PowerPoint up on the screen. Um, I'll introduce myself again, but uh, I'm Anthony Tavey, Chief Academic Officer here at Questar 3 BOCES. Thank you very much for uh, joining us this afternoon. Let me put my screen up. All right, so you guys are here to hear about our P-TECH and Early College High School program at Hudson Valley Community College. So um, this program is gonna be a partnership between Questar 3 BOCES, Hudson Valley Community College, and we are also working very closely with Capital Region BOCES on this partnership. So um, we're looking forward to uh, great things to come. Hopefully, uh, hopefully our enrollment is exactly where we need it to be in the fall. All right, so again, my name is Anthony Taby. I'm the Chief Academic Officer at Questar 3 BOCES. Uh, we're joined by Kim Sparkman. Kim, do you wanna introduce yourself? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kim Sparkman. I'm the Career and Tech Ed Coordinator at Questar 3 BOCES. And we have Mary Kate joining us from Hudson Valley Community College. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Mary Kate Krause. I'm the Director of School Programs and Educational Outreach um, at Hudson Valley. I've been working on this with Anthony and everyone. For a while now. Thank you. All right. And then we are also joined by Lauren Gemmel. Lauren, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lauren Gemmel, the Deputy Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction at Capital Region BOCES. All right. And Mackenzie. Hi, everyone. My name is Mackenzie Bollinger. I am the principal um, of the CTE and PTECH programs currently housed at the Center for Advanced Technology Building. And finally, Tim. Hi, I'm Tim Hansinger. I'm the Capital Region BOCES P-TECH counselor. Great. And we really appreciate um, all of you joining us today. And, and I know that today is going to be more of a, uh, a question and answer session and, and discussion. Um, you guys are you know, already very familiar with, with the P-TECH programs, um, early college high school programs. So it's going to be really more about how this is going to be um, different how this collaboration is going to work and all of that. So um, let me just show this next slide. So with, with our partnership with Capital Region BOCES, there are seven counties served, 46 school districts, um, total served between the, the two BOCES. Um, won't go into too, too much depth. You guys know what, um, what a, what a P-TECH in early college high school is. Um, just to give you a quick background on it, um, Questar 3 BOCES had applied for both the Early College High School and the P-TECH grants. And uh, we were very excited to learn that we got both of them. Um, we never expected to get both of them, but um, we, we were happily surprised by that. And uh, now we're working to try to create an integrated program uh, in partnership with Hudson Valley Community College. So, you know, advantages are the, the opportunities that a P-TECH provides, um, the the RFP this time allowed um, allowed Questar or BOCES, any BOCES, to be the uh, the lead partner in a PTEC um, RFP. So that's what we are here in this in this um, RFP or this this grant application. Um, the PTECs are developed to directly um, address workforce development skill gaps. Um, the students will earn college credits while completing their high school diploma, and it puts the students on a fast track to a college degree while saving their families thousands of dollars in tuition. So our program uh, at Hudson Valley Community College, um, both of our programs will be located there. Uh, we have our own building, uh, the Lang Building, which was the former um, advanced manufacturing building. Uh, but when they built their new building, they, they're repurposing that building. They've recently renovated the second floor and are in the process of renovating the first floor. Um, for those of you that are familiar with Hudson Valley, um, the location of this building on the campus, um, you can kind of see it a little bit in the picture and the lower left-hand corner is that yellow building. Um, and it's, it's on the periphery of the campus, which is nice. There's also um, separate um, access for buses in and out right there. Um, so one of the things that we really wanted to focus in on and make sure of is particularly in the early years of a student's participation at Hudson Valley Community College, that we can keep them isolated and separate from the general population at the college. Um, so we wanted to make sure that particularly in that ninth grade year and hopefully for most of that 10th grade year, 
a lot of what they do is going to be out of the um, the Lang building. So um, teachers um, at the high school level working with them, and then uh, potentially the college professors pushing in or are coming into the building to work with students. So we really want to try to minimize, um, you know, the just the 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 freedom of being on a college campus is quite intimidating, particularly for an eighth grader going into ninth grade. Um, so the students will start coursework as early as ninth grade, and I just put it in parentheses there, but the, the coursework that they'd be doing as a ninth grader is their college forum class. Um, and it's a great course to get them, get their feet wet with uh, college level coursework, really sets them up as to what they're gonna need to do to be a successful college student. The P-TECH program, as you're familiar, um, culminates in an AAS degree of up to 63 college credits. And the early college high school is a uh, more traditional four-year program and students earn a minimum of 24 credits, but can earn up to 60 credits. So the focus is, the focus of these programs. So we have um, multiple pathways um, in each of these. So in the P-TECH program, we have three pathways, computer information systems, focusing on web development, cybersecurity, and artificial intelligence, um, engineering technology, focusing on civil engineering, environmental science and protection, focusing on clean energy management. And then the early college high school pathway is health sciences. And just some examples of programs that the college offers, um, respiratory, respiratory therapy, radiologic technology, and dental hygiene. And I'll kind of go, I'll go into a little bit more detail with that when it comes to the, um, you know, the in-demand job fields associated there. So one of the focuses of our program, and really any, any P-TECH is, is really to um, address uh, gaps and and make sure that that in demand job fields are being addressed by the program. Um, and what we did is we we looked at the forecasted job growth of all the fields that we've identified as pathways within our program. So you can see here that web development has a forecasted 20% um, growth rate, civil engineering 18%, environmental science 17%, and health sciences are among the highest in the region at between 22 and 30% growth. And then you can see um, the growth rates nationally. So you can see they're significantly higher in the capital region. Um, and that's, that's good. That's where the, uh, the students are gonna be. And that's where hopefully the, the job opportunities will be once they graduate. So key benefits, I mentioned the uh, 24 to 63 credits um, at no cost to families. A uh, combination of the best elements of high school, college, and work-based learning. It's a rigorous, relevant, and cost-free education focused on the knowledge and skills the students need to be successful in careers in STEM. Um, strong project-based learning. Uh, we're, we're utilizing our partnership with Tech Valley High School there to help um, build the same um, structures that they have with their project-based learning into our program. So we're going to be working with them an awful lot uh, with professional development and uh, and just trying to make it as 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 good as uh, as good as they've done it there. Uh, integrated workplace visits and workplace learning internships. Uh, one of the advantages of being on the college campus is um, the availability of of different speakers, both from our industry partners and from the college. Um, and then they would have access to all the academic, social planning, and other supports provided to the the college level student along with the individualized academic support that, um, that a K-12 faculty member can provide. Whoops. Not gonna go through all these, but we've talked a lot about these already. Um, you know, the, one of the features of the, uh, I just wanna mention here, our industry partners, we have right now, very early on, Artificial Intelligence Center for Excellence and Tech Valley Center of Gravity. They're both our partners um, in this effort, and we, uh, particularly with Tech Valley Center for Gravity, um, we've already been in discussions with them about different opportunities for integrations of our uh, P-TECH and early college high school students with programs that they have there. So 
So the differences just very, very quickly um, mentioned, PTEC is an up to six year program, culminates in an AAS degree. Students uh, remain enrolled until they complete both, both programs. Um, every student in a PTEC program is assigned an industry mentor. Um, the, the early college high school program is a four year curriculum. Students earn at minimum 24 credits up to 63 college credits that are transferable, transferable um, to over 50 colleges um, throughout New York State through the articulation agreements uh, that, that and Mary Kate can answer that. Um, Mary Kate, are there any outside of New York State? Articulation agreements? Yeah. Um, I, I would do believe that they are. I mean, I can always confirm that and send that to you okay. through our centers of career and transfer. But yes, I believe it extends out of New York. Okay. And then the final final piece, um, early college high school is a unique uh, part of the RFP um, with regard to accountability districts. So um, target districts need to be 51% of the, um, the cohort enrollment for early college high school. Um, one of the things that we are working to do with our collaboration with um, Capital Region BOCES is be able to also include um, students who are enrolling from target districts from Capital Region BOCES as well. So I'm going to let, turn it over to Kim and she's going to talk a little bit about who is this, a successful student in these programs. Thank you, Anthony. And since you're all fairly familiar with what a PTEC is, this is no new news. The design of this is to really make college attainable for students who might not necessarily see that as their future. So we want the students who are motivated for something new. They don't have to have the perfect grades. They just want to try something different. They're excited for college, but it might be a little daunting to them. This will act as that bridge to get them in right away. Um, we're going to have fairly non-traditional classroom settings where there's a lot of collaboration and group projects and, and cross content amongst multiple disciplines. So having that student who thrives in that sort of setting. One of the most important aspects of this is those career paths. So our students should have an interest in computer information systems, um, web development, engineering, environmental or health sciences, so that it piques their interest and helps to motivate them and those who can work well in a collaborative environment. They're going to be meeting students from all over these counties and making new friends. So can they work collaboratively and, and fit in socially with this group? And then of course, a desire for something different. This is the first that will be on a college campus that is different from what they've been experiencing for years at their district. So someone who's motivated and excited by that. Sorry, Kim. Okay. Um, I've been working with some of the districts in our counties to present to students and get this information out. Um, if a student wants to apply, we're letting them know that they should contact their school counselor so that you all know that so-and-so is interested in applying so you can kind of help facilitate what their family will need to do. We do have an online application that is live. It's on our website, which is in the chat. In the application, we're asking them to list two recommendations, one teacher, and and one school counselor. All they do is provide your name and email address, and then you'll automatically get a form sent to you that has some quick questions to ask, to ask you about the person, and that acts as the recommendation. Um, we're also trying to get the word out there as much as possible, so we do have some information sessions coming up for families that are listed right there. And then if we take a look at our timeline, um, our application deadline is moved, moved to April 16th. So like I said, the applications are live now. We do have some applicants and more on the way. So um, April 16th is a deadline there. As the students are applying, we're going to be scheduling interviews with them. And this works in two ways. First, we want the family and the student to be able to ask us 
any question or wonder they might have that they didn't get from the parent sessions so that it is intimate and so we can be very very purposeful with meeting their needs we also want to talk to the student engage what their motivation is and see if they're a good fit for our program after the interview process is complete with them they go into a district-wide lottery which we will conduct on may i'm sorry april 23rd after that districts are notified and student letters go out so that everybody knows who's accepted into these programs by May 1st. Our last slide is just a uh, our website for the P-TECH and Early College High School programs. There's a variety of information on our website, um, more detailed information about each of the pathways, the program requirements at the college level, um, links to the upcoming uh, parent information sessions, uh, and we'll be continuing to update our website. There's a lot of FAQ um, information on there and we'll continue to update the uh, frequently asked questions as those questions come in. Uh, we did have one uh, parent information session uh, last week. Uh, we had approximately um, about 65 um, parents and students participate, which we thought was a pretty good turnout. And we're hopeful that the turnout for our next event on the 30th is similar or even better. So I'm gonna stop my screen share and I'm going to um, invite any questions that, that you have um, that we can answer. And if we don't have an answer for you, we can make sure we get you an answer. Um, just uh, before we do that, um, Lauren, Mackenzie, Mary-Kate or, or uh, Tim, is there anything, I'm sorry, is there anything else that we would, that you'd like to add? I don't think so. I think maybe just from the standpoint of um, counselors, principals that are on the call from Capital Region. So, you know, we currently have our two PTEC programs and they are going to continue to run as Capital Region PTEC so that the current sophomores and juniors, which will be juniors and seniors next year, are going to continue on their pathway and continue. Um, with their teachers and their counselor and their support system that's already set up. We have communication going to those families um, on Friday, just in case anyone on the call was wondering um, the current program that you may have students enrolled in versus um, the new ninth grade cohort coming in, which is a more of a collaboration as Anthony talked about with both of our BOCES. All right, any questions? Um... I have a quick question. Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to clarify that both of these programs, the P-TECH and the Early College High School, are meant for incoming ninth graders, so advertise most to eighth graders, but with potential in the future if room opens up for upperclassmen. Is that how I can explain it to the kiddos? Yeah, so initially it is, it is solely for current eighth graders going into ninth grade. In future years, once there is a cohort beyond ninth grade um, on campus, uh, we, we would be able to consider a 10th grade student to enter. It's going to be really difficult for a student beyond 10th grade to be accepted into either one of these programs because they, at that point, they would be very far behind from a college credit standpoint. Um, like, you know, we have, we have one college course embedded within the ninth grade um, program, and that's the uh, college forum course. But as they, as the students get to 10th grade, we have a lot more college courses embedded there. And if, and if a student were entering after 10th grade, I just would be fearful that they wouldn't be able to, uh, they wouldn't be successful because they'd be so far behind. And one more question, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to attend the last info session. So I'm sorry if all of this was already answered, but should kids know which program specifically interests them when they apply? Or is that something that's decided once they're um, enrolled? So that's a great question, Kendall. Um, you know, I, I think it's, uh, it's not realistic to anticipate that an eighth grade student trying to plan out their next six years is going to know with certainty um, what they want to do. Um, so there, there needs to be some opportunity for, for change in choice. Um, that being said, we will, um, we will identify a priority program for them to be enrolled in. But if we need to transition or switch them as they go forward, um, you know, like I said, that college forum class in ninth grade is going to be pivotal for them because they're going to be exploring all the different pathways and they may have come in thinking health sciences is what I want to do. And then, and then they, they experience clean energy management and change their mind and say, 
I want to do that. So we've got to create some flexibility so that students would be able to, to change their mind. Thank you. And just quickly to add on to what Anthony had just said, I think the other part of that with the college course is the high school coursework, right? So you're thinking about the accelerated um, opportunities for students to take their high school coursework within that ninth and 10th for graduation requirements still into 11th, which then allows them to be taking those college classes as well. So it really is um, more of a rigorous accelerated uh, college or high school coursework that's happening at the same time in ninth and 10th and 11th as you're starting to bring those college courses in. So if a student came in, again, how you're front loading those high school courses would then be problematic as well. So it's on both sides of that as that six year layout or four year layout of courses and opportunities um, for students. All right. Any other questions? You can also put them in the chat if, if uh, you're more comfortable doing it that way. Um, but we will definitely make sure that you are you are unmuted if you if you want to just ask the question. I got a quick question. All right. Go Could ahead, you sir. just describe the um, the district wide lottery process? Sure. What that entails. So. Our cohorts, I should have mentioned this earlier. So our cohort for early college high school is uh, 25 students and our cohort for P-TECH is 45 students. So, you know, assuming and, and uh, optimistically hoping uh, that our um, interest and in applications will exceed those numbers, uh, we would need to do a lottery. Um, and that would, be, that would be part of the process. So, you know, before the lottery, we'd be doing the, uh, the interviews to make sure that, that both from a student and from a program, there's a fit, and then be doing a lottery after that um, if if the number of applicants exceeds the cohort size. Thank you. The lottery will be conducted uh, very similar to the, the way in which uh, the Tech Valley High School lottery is done. So it'll be a uh, very meticulous process. Uh, it'll probably be hosted by a third party to, to make sure that it's uh, but it's unbiased and it'll go uh, that's the process that will follow we do have a question in the in the chat regarding cap region p tech currently will the current cap region p tech programs be continuing indefinitely or just until the current students have graduated great question thank you amanda just until the current students are graduated so um, our current sophomores and juniors, again, will be juniors and seniors next year. They're on their pathway for that six year um, completion of PTEC and we will continue to support them in, in their plan at this point, starting next year with the ninth grade cohort. That's the collaboration with Questar and Capital Region BOCES. So um, the East and the West campus with the PTEC as it exists now will be um, just one PTEC with Questar and um, housed at Hudson Valley Community College. Other questions? All right. Well, I do want to thank everyone for their participation this afternoon. Um, if you think of a question after after this session, please uh, please reach out to us. Um, you can you can uh, send me an email or give me a phone call, and uh, we'd be happy to work with you and answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much for your participation, and we look forward to this partnership. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice day. Have a good Bye. day, everyone.